Jinmitsu Saint Smart Prover 3018. Got version one over here. I've had this for a couple of years. And I have version two over here, which Saint Smart has provided to me to assemble, test, and demonstrate, which I did a previous video on the assembly of it, the initial setup. So what's the differences? What is is something here better? And something over here is something here worse than something over here. Pros and cons, differences, I'm going to show you coming up. Hi, I'm Roger. Welcome to the shop. And I'm comparing the two 3018 CNCs here. We got the Saint Smart version one. I bought this back in sometime in 2020. And I have used it quite a bit, although I did use it mostly for laser work, not so much with a spindle, until I accumulated some other lasers that had bigger formats. This here is the Prover, I guess what they would call version 2. And it has some changes on it. So there are some differences, not a market difference. They both do the same thing. They both have the same work area. It's a 300 millimeter by 180 millimeter. They both grave or cut, depending on what you're doing, and both of them can accept a laser head. Uh, I do not have the laser head that you can get for this. I do have the one that came with this. It's a 5.5 uh, watt output. It does not have a shield on it. It is manual focus, but that was a while back before everybody got into the fixed focus and everything. The one they offer for this now is a fixed focus which is a, a big plus as far as laser heads go. But we're going to talk about the router function, the CNC router function on these two and what the differences are. So I'm going to bring the camera in close and show you some of the differences that I found in playing with this one and my experience with using this one. I'm going to start out with the cosmetic differences and there's, there's not a lot. The, uh, the new one here, the version 2, has actually has Prover on the side on the acrylic. That's a cosmetic thing. Uh, the other cosmetic thing is the original version one, which you can see here, you use socket head cap screws, machine screws. And the version two over here, as you can see on the side, uses a truss head socket machine screw. It's a cosmetic thing. One of the biggest things I have noticed and I really like about the version 2 is let's say here on the version 1 you want to move your y-axis well you got to kind of reach in there and turn that screw to do it manually that is when it's not connected and you can't you're not able to jog it on the uh, version 2 you actually have knobs for the Y the Z and the X which you can't see over here but there's a knob over here, believe it or not, and I can move that very easily, whereas with the version 1, you actually had to grab the screw and turn it. So that's a big plus on the version 2. That's, that's a real nice improvement. Another cosmetic difference on the front where the shafts are and everything. You can see everything here, and here it's kind of built into the frame. So that's, again, that's just cosmetic, but it's kind of nice. Cabling-wise, uh, they're basically pretty much the same as far as uh, the cable management. The motherboards are pretty much the same, and I'll bring the camera around here and show you the back. So what you're looking here is this is the back side of uh, the version 1, the original, and this little board down here, you see, that's, that's for the laser head, and I have that disconnected right now. You absolutely cannot have the laser and the spindle connected at the same time um, on either model, so that, that's something to keep in mind. Um, the offline controller, cable plugs in basically the same place and the offline controllers between the two are just slightly different 
but they function the same. So if you have one of the version 1s and you're moving up to the version 2, there's no learning curve there. They both work the same. Power switches are in a little bit different spot, not a big deal. Emergency stop on the side on both of them. Uh, the cable management on the newer one for the uh, Y-axis stepper motor, it now has a sleeve over it, which is nice. Uh, whereas this one didn't, but there again, it's out of harm's way. This here is the back side of version 2. Here you can see a little bit better cable management they have there. Uh, the motherboard looks slightly different. Power switch is in a slightly different location. But otherwise it's the same. There is a uh, port on here. MPG, miles per gallon? I don't think so. But that is a uh, high density 15 pin port. Almost like you would use on a, oh, the old VGA monitor. I'll have to look and see what that is for. Because the uh, version 1 doesn't have that. Otherwise from the back as you can see here they are visually pretty much the same. One thing I did find is that the z-axis probes are different. As you can see here this is the z-axis probe for the version 2 and this is the one for the version 1. Uh, they are this is 14 millimeters thick, that one's 12 millimeters thick, roughly. They are, it's, there's a fraction after that, but they both function the same. However, you cannot take this probe and use it on this CNC, and you cannot take this probe and use it on this CNC. This has a two-pin connection, this has a three-pin connection. They do not swap. However, they do function the same. If you do happen to have both of these and you're trying to use Candle or some other GECO controller, where you have to have that offset for the probe, you're going to have to change it for each machine. It doesn't, there's no pro, way to save a profile for a certain CNC. You, so, uh, you know, I was using this one here yesterday during the demonstration, and when I got this one out to do a little playing with it, put the spindle back on it, take the laser back off, I had to change my settings in candle. When I went back to this one, I had to change the settings again for that. Z probe offset. Just something to keep in mind if you happen to have more than one of these. Okay, another market difference is the bed. Uh, this is a version 2 bed here. On the version 1 you had T-slots and hammerhead nuts to slide your hold downs through and make adjustments and I actually have a board on there right now as I was playing with that again yesterday. Make sure everything worked. Uh, one of the differences that I found, and this may be just a little bit of a con on the uh, version 2, is I cannot work with this material on here without adding a spoil board to this because the z-axis will bottom out on the limit before the bit ever even gets close to the material. When I was operating with some 3 quarter inch material on there, I had no problem, and there's one there. So three quarter inch material on this was fine when I put a half inch thick material on there. I was not able to make an engrave with this unless I lowered the spindle motor. The problem with lowering the spindle motor within the holder is you then block the air vents because it drops the air vents down below the uh, bracket, carriage, whatever you want to call it. The thing that holds a spindle motor. So you don't want to block your air vents, you'll end up burning up your motor. So even though I could drop it way down and some air could still get through there, I, I didn't really like that idea. That and the spacer that's in there around the motor, that does not move. That's peened onto the spindle motor itself and it hangs out. And if you go too far down it, yeah, it just doesn't work out too well. So that, that's kind of a, a little bit of a takeaway. I did have a spoil board on this previously on the version 1 because I was doing primarily uh, tile engraving and I had a, a template set up so I could set tiles and run them in, in and out quickly. And I have a, had another spoil board I could use on there for when I was doing engraving in case I had an oopsie. Getting back to the hold downs on this, uh, I found the these threaded holes, it's a good idea but I found it to be a little bit inconvenient. That may be a personal preference thing. I preferred these T-slots a lot better. I had a lot more flexibility about where I could put my clamps. Here I was uh, had to do a little bit of figuring out where I could mount this and still be able to turn the wing nut 
not run into the back screw and yeah I was a little bit of got a little bit fiddly there till I caught on to it but there again it's just a little bit of a con on the version 2 however just having these more than makes up for it this is just really nice to have I really wish that one had it okay another difference here and it's, it's going to be I can't really show this but on the x-axis travel here on the screw the bearings and everything and the drive inside is completely different on version 2 than it is on version 1 I know the, they had some problems or some people had problems I've never had a problem with how the uh, bearings act on these and of course you do need to keep these screws lubricated I don't care which model you got you got the best thing is to use a dry lube on it like you would use uh, a bicycle dry lube that type of thing like you use on a bicycle chain so it doesn't collect dust and you need to keep that lubricated your z-axis screw and your y-axis screw you need to make sure all those are lubricated keep your rods clean where they slide on the bearings uh, either model any 3018 any one of these you got to you still have to do maintenance I would assume that the Y is also modified. I'm going to actually take a look here from the way the old one was, and it is. It's a completely different type of carriage down here now. So what about performance? Well, they both perform the same, at least uh, for the little test projects I've done so far. Uh, like, as I said, I did put the uh, spindle back on this one, took the laser head off. I ran the same test files on here as I did on here. The only thing I found was that my bit was really, really dull. I needed to change it because it tore my wood up the first time. Uh, the tip had been broke off. Once I changed the bit, everything worked fine. Sound, noise, it's the same, either one. They both make the same amount of noise. It's not obnoxiously loud or anything. It's not like somebody's running a circuit or saw. But you, you will be aware that they are running when they are actually doing their carving. Durability. Don't know yet. This one's done just fine. I have had absolutely zero problems with it. Uh, this is new, so it hasn't had a whole lot of runtime on it yet. I'll have to load easel up, put some projects into it, and uh, give it some long runs. I have done a lot of laser engraving with this one. Not so much the routing, but laser engraving. I did a whole lot with that one. I'm going to have to get back into doing more of the routing and carving with these. Uh, I haven't done any, a whole lot of that in the past. I did do quite a bit of it when I first got this, but then when I found out I could make money with the laser head, well, things kind of changed a little bit. Now I'll put a couple final comments on this. I'm trying to make this here a fairly short video. I just want to compare the differences between these two. Uh, if you're looking to get into routing with a CNC, this is a good entry-level machine. It is not a professional heavy duty machine where you're going to be throwing sheets of three quarter inch plywood in there and cutting a bunch of parts out. That, those are big and they're thousands and thousands of dollars. But if you're just getting into this and you want to learn it, this is a good way to do it. Because the principles that come here with these machines also apply to the big CNC machines. And there are extension kits you can get on this to make it a little bit bigger. And there's different types of heads. And there's, of course, there's different models. And you can move up and get as big as you want. But there's going to be a learning curve. I don't care if what model you get or what brand you get. If you're just getting into CNC, there is a learning curve. You're not going to be able to just put one of these together and draw a picture and start making things. There is a learning curve to it. You're going to have to learn the modeling, the CAD CAM, and the, you know, creating a tool path. You're going to need to learn a little bit about G-code. It's not hard. It just takes some time. So don't think it's just going to happen right out of the box. Same thing with a laser engraver or a 3D printer. Take it out of the box. It's not just going to work. You're going to have to learn how to use it. Okay, I'll have more videos coming up on uh, using this and some things you can make and I'll do some demonstrations and kind of show you how to set things up in easel and then get them over into candle and get them running on your CNC. So if you got anything out of this appreciate getting a thumbs up. If you'd like to get one of these there'll be a link in the description. Actually if you'd like to get one of these I'll stick a link down there too. I don't know how long they're going to keep the version one around 
Put the version 2. That's a pretty neat little improvements on it. Thanks for watching. I'm Roger in the shop. We'll see you in the next one.